Good morning, folks. A link to this story and video is below. The new IRIS mission from NASA, set to peer deep into the lower corona where most of the flaring is taking place. Allow me to read Noah's explanation of what you see here and tell me if it sounds familiar. Cold, dry air sweeping down from Canada, mixing with warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico and Pacific Ocean are merging in the U.S. plains today, creating conditions for some very turbulent weather. Yeah. By now you know the death toll is chugging up that hill as a devastating tornado destroyed an Oklahoma City suburb. Yesterday morning, I told you tornado season is back and today, I'll tell you take no chances. You need to recognize where the low pressure cell is and where it's supposed to be moving. You need to be aware of the convergence tail tending to swing back west. This is where the warm moisture meets cool dry air and they duke it out above our heads. The watch zone today is enormous, from Texas pretty much to Lake Erie, and a wide, wide range on either side of a line between them. It's coming again tonight. Be ready. NASA's Earth Observatory zooming in on cracking ice. I won't spoil the article. It's linked below. Along with that, an excellent drought look for what's needed to abate what remains a fairly significant lack of water in the United States. It's also got some good tidbits about some other precipitation extremes. Also linked for you. It's the April 2013 Global Climate Report. Some places were very hot, others very cold. They really didn't miss much of anything, and I'm sure wherever you are in the world, they've got something for you. As always, the link is in the description box below the video. Apart from some anomalous spikes, we see a general relaxation of the solar wind. The latest CME never did much to us magnetically or in terms of plasma penetration, and the KP index hasn't even registered instability, let alone a magnetic storm. Earth's primary magnetic connection to the Sun is dead center on the northern solar disk, west of the former X-flaring delta spot, which we can now say is turning away from Earth. Along with the Sun's willingness to flare, we got quiet again on the GOES X-ray flux. That'll happen when your monster sunspots decay and turn away. The eastern limb is offering up two more sets of active regions, on the north and on the south. We appear to have magnetic complexity and the Earth facing quiet notwithstanding. We'll monitor those magnetics as they turn. Even without flaring, it's surely no boring sun. Even though our primary sunspot group faded, it still wants to scream and shout. Neither of these surface events produced a major CME, and what ejecta was produced is mostly headed north of our planet. Nice to look at though. So who can guess where this is? Okay, most of you are on point enough to recognize the Kamchatka's quake swarm of the last 48 hours. Up the northwest Pacific there, the quake watch kicked off with a 6.8, downgraded to 6.5 off the coast of Chile, and since then we have had three more six-pointers, all at Kamchatka, making four significant quakes in less than 24 hours. The primary factor for this watch has been the coronal hole and umbral opening, the dark area is seen here with the north side swinging into face earth now. As we watch shots of our star, know that energetic flux is still present as well in the proton count, hopefully that will fade today, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.